Rob Roy here. Welcome to New Society's Look into the World of Quartered Building, a visual introduction to some of the material presented in my new book, Quartered Building, a Comprehensive Guide to the State of the Art. I'm the director of Earthwood Building School in West Chazy, New York, where my wife Jackie and I have been teaching Cordwood Masonry since 1981. We have 11 Cordwood buildings at Earthwood. Three round ones are lined up like the three stars of Orion's belt. 16-sided buildings, called hexadecagons, have the spatial advantages of round, but enable the Cordwood builder to work under the umbrella protection of a roof already in place. Chapter 20 of the book shows hexadecagons from Hawaii to Tasmania. Cordwood buildings can be virtually any shape, like Tom Huber's rectangular vacation home near Potsdam, New York, the subject of Chapter 13. Besides load-bearing round cordwood structures and using cordwood as infill within a timber frame, another option for rectangular buildings is to construct stack wall corners of squared blocks and then infill with regular cordwood masonry between the corners. A small building is a good place to start. Jeff Huggins in Winchester, Virginia built a little meditation room, the interior of which is seen here. Jackie and I have taught quartered masonry all over the world at workshops like this one near Woodland Park, Colorado, and this one in central Wisconsin, where we see a window buck, or frame, built into the cordwood wall. Here, Jackie lays up log ends at a neighbor's house in northern New York. Walls can be anywhere from 8 inches to 24 inches thick, but always have an inner mortar joint, an important insulated space in the middle, and an outer mortar joint. Thus, the walls are thermally efficient. Using my earlier book, Stone View, also from New Society, a student built this Airbnb about an hour from Earthwood. For log ends, the mother and son builders used ends and pieces left over from a log home manufacturer. They tell their story in Chapter 18. Cordwood can be very low in cost, like this little roundhouse on an island in Lake Nicaragua. And this hostel, just a couple of miles away, also on the island. They're both in Chapter 16. But architect built modern structures, like the 10,000-square-foot Arca Center for Social Justice at Kalamazoo College in Michigan, are also possible, as described in detail by the Studio Gang architects in Chapter 16. The architects and the professional masons had fun with a warped wall design feature. Our sunroom at Earthwood has its own design features, including this panel of bottle ends based upon our visit to Easter Island. The famous Easter Island stone statues, called Moai, are replicated in the panel, made from Pisco wine bottles brought back from Chile. Bottle ends and other special design features are the subject of Chapter 8. This panel, at our summer cottage Mushwood, which appears on the book's cover, was inspired by a trip to Australia and includes log ends with Aboriginal artwork and lots of bottle ends. Our son Darren incorporated a colorful tree into his, into his 20-sided home called Driftwood, just a hundred yards from Earthwood. The nut didn't fall far from the tree. A Scottish Highland woodcarver created this Celtic design piece featured on a corded wall at Mushwood. For those who prefer a more natural mortar, cob can be used between log ends, as we demonstrated at the 2015 Natural Building Colloquium in Kingston, New Mexico. Indeed, corded building is an evolving and creative process.